G plus, you feel like you're getting the hang of it? Um, it's uh, yes and no. I'm I'm uh, you know, learning every day. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's okay. getting better. Um, you know, the problem is my um, go to reference is Facebook, and it's completely, utterly different. So, um, I'm the same way. You know, the first time you learn something, you think, oh, okay, well, this is going to be true in another context, and um, there's like there's no way to message people in in Google Plus that's that's intuitive the way it, it's right there and available in uh, Facebook. But you know, that's a little thing. It's not something I stay awake at night worrying about. Well, that's good. Um, okay. How old are your kids? I know you've got little ones. I'm just curious. I do. Uh, my son is eight, and my daughter is turning ten this week. Oh, she's wow. actually home sick from school today. Wow! So you're you're in the Bart Simpson ages. <laughs> yeah, it's about to get good. <laughs> um. All right. So, uh, are you sharing from G Plus, or you have? Uh... Let's see. How do I show you my pictures? Um, I'm in Chrome, and yeah, I'm actually kind of. Um, I don't know. Do, okay. Is there a way to know? Well, um, if you're, are you sharing them from the G Plus community, or where do you have them open at? Um, I don't have them open, but I can go find them. I can go to the um, is it the voices within and without, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so I can go down to that set, and then and then if you go to the top left over here. There's a whole bunch of little icons, and this little green one that shows up okay. right here it is. Um, it appeared and it disappeared, so I have to. Um, yeah, when you mouse over it, it'll come up, and then uh, that is your screen share button, and that'll bring up all of the windows that you have open. So you can click on the window that shows the G Plus community. Okay, and then. And then click start screen share, and that should bring it up for you, and we should be able to go through. If we have a problem, share. then I'll do it. Is this it? Is this working? I don't know. I don't see say screen share. I see slideshow more. Add to album, set as cover photo, auto enhance. Slide no, well, you have to do it from our chat window. So do you have Google open? Are you looking at your pictures right now? Yeah, um, okay, I'm so looking at the the level four voices within and without. Okay, so you want to go in and actually click on your album where you uploaded the photos. Okay, let me go to my account. My account. Oh gosh, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm such an idiot with this. You're That's not really at funny. all. It's a learning curve. It, it it took me a while too. I actually the first couple of weeks that I was teaching in the Arcanum, I was like, I don't think I can do this. I'm going to make it a Facebook. <laughs> group because I can't operate in G plus. It took me a while to get the hang of it. But it's good. This is a good learning process to just get more proficient because now I use it all the time. It is really beneficial. So um, but once you open your collection of images, then you want to come back to the group here with me on my screen. Did I lose you? No. There we go. Let's try again. Well. Okay, yeah, at least I got you back. I still haven't figured out where to get my photos. I, um... Okay, I'm going to show you. So what I want you to do is click on down here, here at the bottom. Just highlight my window so that it comes up large for you. Right. And then I'm going to show you. All right. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so when you go in, and you go to the communities. When you're on 
Wow. Uh, I wonder if I can actually do this. Hang on. Let me try again. Desktop. There we go. Okay. So it's going to create this little tunnel thing because we're looking at a video of me looking at a video of me. Yeah. But right up here, when you scroll over to the left, it'll bring up. It's not doing it. Now. This little green button here is uh -huh. your screen share button. Okay. So as soon as you click on that, it'll give you the options to select which screen you want to share. Okay, and I do that from within my account, or I do that from within the Lark's cohort? You do it from right here. Oh. So you're sitting looking at me. If you just move your, your mouse over this screen, like yeah. you're looking at my face, okay. it should bring them up on the side. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So if you click on screen share on the second one from the top here, Screen share. Entire screen. Mm -hmm. You're going to look for uh, G+. They should all be labeled. So like, you can share your desktop, and then it'll show whatever's on your desktop. Well, it you says, would really... like to share the content of your screen. I have entire screen, Google Plus Hangouts, and applications. Google Plus choices. Hangouts is what you're looking right. for. There you go. Now you're looking at me. OK, I am. <laughs> Um, okay, so now we figured out how to share the thing. So at the top of your screen right now, it should have a thing that says stop screen sharing. Mm -hmm. And so if you click that, it'll bring you back so that I'm talking to you, right? Yeah. Nice and simple. Okay, so now if you go over and click on, you said you were in Google Chrome, if you go over to the Google Communities, then basically, let me see. So you would come over, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so you would come over and then you would just go down into, you would select on um, Google Plus. Um, when you have that open, this window will show up as an option for you to screen share. And then if you just go over and find yours, then you can click on that and it'll bring it up so that we can see. So. Something good to practice. Since I already have it, I'll just um, I'll do this screen share, and I'll take it from here rather than us going through you doing it because we already have a month. But just oh, to kind of get an idea of it. Jeez, yeah, I'm totally lost. Anyway, okay. Sorry can you about see, that. Can you see the first image right now? Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through them one by one. And I want you to just uh, tell me a little bit about creating the image and what went into it, and then you're going to grade it on a scale of zero to three. Zero okay. is, I have no idea why the hell I brought this to critique. Um, one is that it showed promise, but that we missed the mark with it. We were having some trouble with some of the aspects of it, yeah. lame and technical. Uh, two is a commendable image, one that you're happy with. Three is exceptional. And then I'm going to grade you as well, and we'll see if we're kind of in the same place with mm -hmm. it. So. So tell me a little bit about this photo. Okay, so this was this was made as um, one of two as a Mother's Day present, back when the kids were eight and five, and it is in studio, and um, you know the kids were having fun and being cute, and it was you know in the time when I mean we're sort of involved in high tech industry, so I thought it would be really fun to, as a caption for the picture have call outs as though this five and a half year old boy was a piece of software. So it, it, <laughs> it reads as boy OS 5.5 upgrade improved language processing now includes 50% faster parsing of help modes reduced intentional behavior duplication conflicts with sister version 8.5 significant eye to ball coordination improvement improved differentiation between left and right though shoes are still subject to contextual willfulness states improved rule comprehension through, though some hierarchical command conflicts are well documented with sister 8.5 and later and then finally the <laughs> same friendly squeezable gui interface and then i did one of elizabeth with the same treatment same photo session um, I didn't think I needed to put two of them up here, but I just, that, that was, so this was something I did as a person who has a life in photography 
but it was away from my commercial stuff. So it was considered personal work, I guess, and having okay. fun. I love this shot. It's really cute. Tell me about why there is a bug on his <laughs> It's really great. I photographed his sister first. So he's watching. And I got this great picture of Elizabeth with the bug. And the bug just stayed on her nose. And it was perfect. Um, and Roger was like, okay, now it's my turn. I want to do it. I want to do it. Because he adores his sister and wants to do everything his sister does, and he wants to do it better, and he wants to get praise because they're just really close. When we set up Roger, the bug kept dropping off his nose. Kept <laughs> dropping off his nose. Kept dropping off his nose. So this one shot, just by sheer will, he is willing that bug to stay there on his nose so he could do the same picture his sister did. <laughs> and I just, you know, the look, the look of concentration on his face. It's just priceless. Got yeah. Me. Yeah. You know, so that's, it's what I have. And I give it a three, <laughs> but I'm prejudiced. <laughs> it's a very cute shot. Um, I like the catch lights in the eyes. I love the little unruly hair. I'm a sucker for, um, very natural, uh, sort of portrait taking and less retouching with mm -hmm. children. Cause I think yeah. they're so perfect. Um, I like it in black and white. I think his shirt is a little busy, so that's yeah. a little visually distracting for me. I think a solid color shirt would have been stronger, and I probably would have just softened just a little bit the lines of his neck here. They're really, really prominent uh -huh. visually. So he's got like this grandma neck thing going on on this little like, um, you know, yeah. five and a half year old body, um, which is probably just him trying to like squash his face and find the right angle to keep his nose down, but. Um, mm -hmm. Those are the only two things that really jump out at me. Um, and I would and agree. I've, I've, I've had an issue with the, the graphics on the shirt. Um, but it never, you know. Yeah, in general. It's one of the things it's, I notice. Yeah, in general, unless you're shooting fashion photography, like plainer clothes, less patterns, they yeah, tend to, I agree tend with to that. work better. Um, I don't mind the square cop. Crop makes it very easy to share on Instagram. Well, I don't know that I'm a huge fan of the border. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, I hear you. And actually, it was shot with a um, a Leaf at the time. It was a Leaf DCB2 digital bag for Hasselblad. So okay. it was a square format. And it was one of these ancient digital backs that needed, <laughs> it needed a filter wheel to do color shots. <laughs> That's um, awesome. and it had a whopping 2048 pixels square. Um, but it worked well with the, the old hustle blog, which I was, um, very comfortable with. And, um, I agree with you. I go in and out of border treatment like I do with cropping. It's like, I'm, I'm schizophrenic and you know, a kid in a candy store. I can never make a decision. Uh, they, you know, they serve their purpose here and there. It just depends. But um, I also feel like when you do the square crop and then do the border, it has a very Instagram app kind of feel rather than a professional photographer. Wow. And I did this. Finish. I did this probably five years before Instagram even existed. Um, yeah. Isn't that funny? Um, but, you know, I agree with you. And, and it's an interesting element because it does to me and my my perception seems to be um follows trends you know it follows different popularity phases in and out you know for a while you know if you were a cool photographer in film you'd you'd have your Hasselblad backs notched so you could get you know you knew that was from back one back two and back three and it was like this really cool thing to show full frame and show the notch on your Hasselblad in the frame you know only other photographers would know and you know, be impressed. <laughs> um, but you know, now that you're talking about, it, I have to, I have to like crop it in my face. It's, it, it's a great strong image. And I think, um, going bleed in context of maybe online uh, presentations are a really good idea. Yeah, I, I like it. And I do think the square works from a, a composition standpoint. I think that I would lose the border, but you know, it's personal 
personal preference, I think, more than necessarily. No, I like that, and I, I respect your 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 perspective and your your separate eyes. And I am now really interested in looking at all the other images I have in squares to see how I've treated them, because it's one of those things mm. you do. You get in you get in production mode, and and sometimes you just don't think about it. Or you lose your mindfulness because you get into mindlessness about got to get this work out, got to do this, got to do. Oh, I always love the the black border with the white frame, but. You, you know, you kind of get in your own pattern and, and you don't see the forest for the trees. Yeah, I so you're agree. You're causing trouble. Now I, have to go, now I have to go look at all those square pictures. Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but overall, overall, it's a great photo. Like, you know, his eyes are popping. Yeah. I love the expression. You can see the concentration oh in the don't Oh my God, I don't. There's a bug on my nose. Um, so I love the energy of it and the 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 very stoic sincerity that a little five-year-old can emit because they're usually just such little balls of energy. Yeah, I know. Oh, my God. Um, and, you know, I have to say, I'm, I'm such a sap, but yesterday, <gasps> I took him to the bar, fed him two margaritas because he's, he's going to college on Thursday, I'm driving him down to UC Santa Barbara. And he's still the great kid that you see in this picture. It's just... Oh, I... You're gonna choke me up because I've been thinking about the fact that I've only got a couple of years until Katie goes. Yeah, it, it doesn't stop. I'm sorry. I'll, no, it's I'll good. Stop. You know, I just. Good. Um, God, but yeah. you do like you you hit on a very important point because, like, this is it right here. This is what we do, and it's yeah. funny because you you can say. I'm taking him for margaritas. And for a second I paused and I was like, why are you taking your 5.5 year old from margaritas? <laughs> you know, but that that's something that they won't understand until they have their children that you can take him for margaritas, but still oh see God. the little boy with a bug on yeah. his nose. Well, you know, and he's going, you know, you're a good dad. Don't worry about, you know, I always feel like, Oh, I've been a bad father, been a bad father, but um, I got lucky and um, got these two amazing kids. And, um, I just feel really blessed. No matter what else happens, I mean, a lot of crazy stuff's happening in my life, but these kids are great. And um, um, yeah, just okay. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna give it a two. I do think it's a strong image. This shirt um, really distracts okay. me to keep it from a three, but it is still really strong. Tell me about this one. This woman, um, I was working um, for a company in the city that, that was a pre-press company, and they we sort of joined forces. So um, I, at the time, digital was really kind of you know the happening thing, and they were expanding out of out of pre-press and doing digital pre-press, and they had bought a fancy directed digital printing press, so they wanted to have everything under one roof. So I was working um, for them. I built the, the digital studio in there for them, and then I was just using their studio in the city. And this lady came in through one of the, the reps who um, had um, an agent, a book agent, had contacted um, us to shoot a portrait of this lady because she had just survived cancer. She was 19, and she'd just written a book about being a, a cancer survivor. Wow. Um, and so she came in. She was a big woman. She was beautiful. Um, you know, I didn't know what she looked like. If I'd known, I would have booked makeup and hair. But they also didn't have budget for it, so there's a conundrum there. So we just kind of worked with what we had. And I just shot a ton of pictures. This particular image has gained in contrast a lot through the, the process of, you know, going into the Internet and being parsed and adjusted. But it, to me, on this monitor on my iMac, it looks a little contrasting. Yeah, that's yeah. always that's always the trade off with uploading and you know, especially when other people are viewing it on uncalibrated yeah. screens and stuff like that. Um, I agree with you. It is a little little high contrast and it comes off a little hot right around the cheeks here. And yeah, and there's the, um, there's you know, there's a you know, I go for a like a two forty three to two forty five highlight detail. In my numbers, when I when I do skin, I do two forty seven for polished metal, but you can't tell that here, so it's just you know. Yeah. Now, I know you're probably curious about the the strong crop, 
And um, I just kind of did this deliberately because I'll be honest with you, I didn't want her to go. I just wanted to keep shooting, shooting pictures of her. <laughs> so um, I kept engaging her and talking to her and, and trying different various things. Um, and I just went for this this strong, this stronger crop because um, I thought it would be a little bit more interesting, a little more attention getting. Um, you know, kind of troubled about her arm, but you know. Um, and then the, the client picked like the total headshot, head and shoulders kind of thing, but I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, and I like her expression. She was really good at, um, you know, following direction. And um, I think she was really proud of her book. So it was kind of a fun event to photograph her. Gotcha. Um, um, I, I put two umbrellas on the background so I get a clean white background. Um, and I had enough distance so I could really, really adjust the background in the foreground without worrying about light spilling from one to the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have to admit, I'm a big Irving Pan, Pan and Richard Avedon fan. So, and I'm from New Jersey, so a lot of that East Coast, New York photography shits in my blood. You know, I'm 62, <laughs> came a photographic age in you know the 70s, and you know with film Nikons and Rolly flexes and stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I like that you're experimenting and that you're bold with it. I definitely think that this, this is a strong image for black and white. It comes off just a little bit hot around her face, but not enough to, to kill the shot for me. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few things that me, from the retouching perspective, oh, would good. go. Oh, Yeah, I could use that. Um, the lines on her neck. Yeah, I'm always very careful, and you'll you'll be able to appreciate this too. Like the older you get, the more you start to realize the difference <laughs> between age lines and laugh lines. You had to bring that up. <laughs> it's really, You're really like, a troublemaker I, today. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, but it's you know, there's different ones. So like even you know, even early into my twenties, like you notice like when people smile they come in so these yeah, are laugh sure. lines so you can like figure out which ones are there but the ones that don't go away like i'm always i i put the smoothing filter on when i stream too so you can't see them but like i have these ones and they never go away now all the time like i walk oh, but i don't see those um yeah because i keep it on the smooth filter yeah. um <laughs> i have like instant and, air and, rush. and 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 just an aside kid you're you're naturally gorgeous, so <laughs> probably understand thirty percent of your obsession is just you looking at yourself because the rest of the world just sees a really beautiful woman. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely, I deal with that with clients all the time. With them feeling that way too, and me going, "Can't you can't you see what I see?" Yeah. Um, but, but I know, it is the kind I know of about thing the laugh that... lines, and I've heard you in other critiques talk about that and. Um, you know, I run into that, and and I do know I could build up my my editing chops on on that regard. I've been using Portrait Professional, which is kind mm -hmm. of a canned product, and it doesn't give me the individual control that I get, you know, with Photoshop and, and my Wacom tablet. And yeah. I, I know I could I know I could do better in that regard. Part of it is knowing where to start and what you know, what the standard. I mean, there there's certain things to look for. Like with the neckline, would I would I try to do liquefy on that? Or would I just try to smooth out the shadow to make the blend is more? Because uh, mm. that's a strong tendon. That that's a strong anatomical feature. No, and I like the that, and that's a really good point. I like the anatomical features of it. It would just be these lines oh, right well here that, that are the yeah, H that's lines. Piece of cake. Yeah. Yeah. So those would go softening out the shadows here because this starts to yeah. look a little pudgy. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. the girls always call them the chicken cutlets. Because <laughs> um, that's what it looks like, and a lot of that depends on them wearing bras that are properly fitted too. Yeah, they put in. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but girls, even when they're slender and even when they're young, like even when you have really good uh, physique, this tends to be a problem area if the the skin. I got, yeah, and I totally get what you're saying. I totally, and I'm gonna write that down because it, it's. Um, Chicken cutlets, you're too funny. Chicken cutlets, yeah. <laughs> so like this little line here, the extra crease, that would totally go. And then I would just go in and soften the shadows here and here because uh -huh. the shadows, the light will always betray 
you know, the yeah. protrusions. So sure. um, those are two. And then there's just like a couple of little blemishes right mm -hmm. here under mm -hmm. her lip that I would want to go in and smooth out. But I like yeah. uh, the texture in her eyes and the expression. So I would not go out and if anything, if she wanted to look young and flawless, then you would soften, but you yeah. wouldn't get rid of these ones because that's when they start to look plastic. Yeah. Because it's too smooth. Like you want little bits. So the general rule is if their expression lines that become more prominent when they smile or they mm -hmm. laugh or they frown, then you soften them, you don't get rid of them. If their age lines, things that weren't there when they were 15 or five, then you, you know, then you can retouch them all the way out and that's fine. Um, I like the bold crop, but you're shooting at a lower angle from her. So you're actually, you're mm -hmm. not camera parallel with her face. You're kind of par camera parallel, like right here. Yeah. And that with was the lens. I, I actually don't really want to do that. Cause I didn't want her to look like a beauty queen. I wanted to look like a politician. Okay. Because, because it was an author picture. I, I wanted to give her some sense of authority. Well, um, she definitely has that in the stand. Um, in fact, I, had to get, I had to get, I had to get on the Apple box to, um, I don't know why. No, I don't know. I don't know if I did. I mean, hang on. I'm, so I'm, I'm going to write this down. So look for expression lines and soffage and look for age lines and fix. Yes. That's a really great tip. And what, what's cool is I'm, I'm showing you pictures I've looked at for hours and hours and hours. And this is really great information because it, it feeds right into what I've been looking at for so long. Yeah. Um, the only, only other things, um, I might go in and just with the liquefier, probably mm -hmm. warp would be easier. Just pull this in just a little because the way that she's kind of yeah. heavy leaning on it, you would want to straighten that a little bit. Um, part of that again is your angles. So whatever you're shooting closest to is what seems largest. Most women do not want their midsections to seem larger. Yeah. So, in the digital age and the selfie age, like you see girls all the time and they, um, you know, they always take their cell photos. If you watch girls do it, they always go like this. Yeah. And it's the yeah. thing where even though they're not trained to understand technically why, it's because their eyes and their boobs are closest to the camera in terms yeah. of their figure. So it makes them look big and it makes their waist look tiny and the chins look tiny, which is feminine. Mm -hmm. So same thing when we're looking at um, the image of her, even if you have this strong crop, the downside is that women are all curves. So as soon as you get off the edge, you've taken away everything that's feminine about the figure. And because Got we're it. shooting from yeah. a lower line, the closer that I get to even with the camera, the wider my body starts yeah. to look. Yeah, I hear so you. So if you had had her, even if you wanted the lower, the lower angle for the shot, just having her lean forward a little bit oh. would have taken this line that's essentially flat and put that curve in. I got it. Yeah. So they're just really subtle things. So most of the time, and I'm short, I'm only 5'2". So most of the girls that come in are taller than me, especially when we put them in heels. So having someone sit like this or sit like this even mm -hmm. makes them look a lot wider. Like I have no neck, even if I pull my hair to the other side so that you can see it. This makes me look really wide as opposed to this. Yeah, I've got it totally. So it's just that little lean down in the drop of the shoulder, which lets you appreciate the collarbones and things too. So um, just food for thought the next time. Let me see. So yeah, I'm, I'm okay with the fact that you were being adventurous with the crop, but if you crop the, you know, the curve of her out here, then you really want to over accentuate this one and give mm -hmm. her a really nice back curve. So this line should really be like here. Oh, you know? yeah. Which you can fake in Photoshop. I mean, you can liquefy and pull it in. But if you had had her do that lean down and just turn a little bit more, you would have had much more of a triangle of space here that would have still given the illusion of her being slender. I think we thickened her up a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, she's a, she's a, um, she's, she's a, 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 you know, healthy woman. She's a homesteader now. So she just basically lives on farms and. Right. Well, even still, like you can still, you can be honest about their figure. Like a lot of it is posing. So you're not yeah. lying. You're just picking the most flattering angles. And we just, you know, I've never had anybody say, um, look, I'd really like a nice portrait of me. If we could feature, you know, feature the chicken cutlets, that'd be ideal. You yeah. know, it's usually yeah, like, you know, I like this part of my figure. I like these accents on my face. You know, I'm known for my eyes, my lips, my 
And she does. She has a beautiful face and she's giving a really strong expression. So if we'd had her lean forward and made the face the focus. Yeah, and that's what the you... client picked. And, and I actually have, have in, in, a, in a previous post, I have a color version of this that's, that's cropped differently. Okay. Um, but I do, I do love the lighting on her face and how we pick up the highlights in the eyes. They really, really pop, which is harder to do in black and white when you don't have that accentuation of color to help push it. Yeah, her eyes are amazing. So I think that's really strong. I'd probably go in and just clean up just usually the loose hairs. Because if you smooth this all into a circle, then it just looks fake. So if they're more than like two or three hairs, I leave them. But like all these little loose ones, I would go in and take mm -hmm. out. And yeah. I would probably take out these ones by her neck too because I don't think they're adding. But I love the tendrils here. Um, I love the freckles. I love the texture that you keep in her skin. I definitely don't want to see you um, start doing what so many do and over like plasticize. And, and yeah. um, you know, they try to do them perfect and they end up making them look like Barbie dolls and paintings. Oh, my um, God, yeah. just yeah. Just a couple of little blemishes touching them out, I think, would mm -hmm. be good. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to give you a one for this one. I think it's yours, right. promise. I like that you were being um, inventive and daring with the posing, but I think there were a few things we could have did with the pose to make that crop work a little bit better. Um, it's, still, it's still a decent shot, but it's not my favorite that I've seen from you. Okay, tell me about this one. Um, for a while, one of my clients was a, a magazine called Q Magazine, and these guys, they're engineers, right? So it's really boring. Um, <laughs> and I was working with an art director who was in Baltimore, and um, she would, you know, she'd get an assignment and she'd send me out, and most of the people that were in the magazine were here, and one of the, the guys that was a writer for the magazine is a the guy at Stanford, and he would go out and interview someone, and they wanted me to photograph the person while he was being interviewed, so they could do the interview and the portrait at the same time, and have original pictures to publish in in the article. And um, I did a number of these, and, and one of the people that they wanted to photograph was uh, Ed Catmull, who's one of the co-founders of Pixar. Right. And um, I just, you know, the uh, Pat, who was the interviewer, was just sitting over. To the right, and just and just talking and chatting, and um, Ed and I had some discussion about the five D that I was using, and he had one, and um, and I just picked this picture um, out of the lot because it just showed to he was a moment lost in thought, and I just kind of thought it's a it's a nice moment, and he's just facing the light. It's just it's just natural light. I didn't have to light it. Okay. Uh, so that's it. You know, uh, on a tripod high ISO in the flow of the discussion kind of thing. Nice. Um, I love this shot. The expression is fantastic. It's very genuine. You can feel the energy through the image. Um, as far as, and it's different when you're going on set and you don't have um, control of like the backgrounds and things. And uh, especially if this was a candid moment that he, that you caught rather than posed him at, um, you know, you're kind of at the mercy of your surroundings. Right. But um, the few things that jump out at me right away, I would take out this and I would take out these and just leave mm -hmm. it a blank wall behind him because I think that these are distracting. I want to look over here. Um, I would also take out this button down here by his hand because it looks oh. like he's trying to hold something. And because of the um, wow. shape of the buttons, they're so yeah. sharp. And your focus is back further towards his face. So the button's actually sharper than his hand. So I pay more attention to that than I do him. Um, so I would just go in and clone that yeah, out. Yeah, you can see that. Hmm. Um, other than that, there's just a couple of little things. Again, like guys appreciate it too when you just hide anything that shows signs of getting flabby or, or age. So like just touching out like these extra age lines that you're starting to see on the skin. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of when I shoot men. I like to leave more of the texture because I, you know, people talk about it all the time. Like men age like wine and women age like milk. So, oh, that's uh, so sad. <laughs> I, you know, I, there's a lot of, a lot of people, um, find a lot of, um, a lot of men start to look more distinguished and, and gentlemanly. And, and so men are actually usually perceived 
you know, more attractive and sexier at an older age where women, it's like youth and beauty yeah, I know. Um, kind of thing. So I like to keep a lot of the texture. I wouldn't want to touch almost anything on his face at all in retouching, but there's a couple of really strong oh, lines yeah. down here that are age lines that I would just go in and soften. And I mean, you can go in with like the clone brush at like maybe half um, opacity, if that, and mm -hmm. try to go over just so that it softens it. You don't want to get rid of it, but you just want to minimize it so that you don't have these strong creases in the skin. Yeah. Um, Cause that's what they are. Like yep. the lines show up and then they just keep getting deeper and deeper. Totally so the, yeah, the more contrast and the sharper the line is, the more aged, it has the effect of making them look. Um, other than that, I totally think it works. I, I'm guessing this is the edge of the chair. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit distracting. You could probably come in here and just clone the books down yeah. um, and get rid of this too. Um, but if you can't do that, you could probably at least go in and just touch up the, the edge of this right now that's catching the light because that's mm -hmm. what grabs my attention visually in it and pulls me down there. Um, the background's busy, but I don't mind it because it's him and his element. Um, and it's a shallow enough depth of field that there's enough blur that I feel like it's not competing. If we'd shot it and everything was tack sharp, I think it'd be too busy with the color and yeah. the, the texture, but it works here. I don't mind it at all. Um, well, also in my comment when I posted this, um, I don't know if you read those or not, I was, I was mm -hmm. trying to decide whether to have the, the bookshelf vertical or whether I would just keep the natural angle to it because it looks a little askew but when I straightened it up I I wound up the crop because the crop of his hand is close to the real edge of the frame I'm sorry I, I keep putting my hands in front of the camera um okay. I'm, trying, I'm trying to crop the picture on the screen um I came down and I'd be I, I would just be cropping his hand and I, I felt like I wanted to keep the hand shape. No, I like the hands. I mean, it is, and you know, it's the kind of thing that in competition, somebody would call you out and you'd lose points for the lines not being straight. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I feel like if you took this line and straightened it, that it would have him looking too far up and it yeah. probably would throw off the perspective. Crop yeah, aside. I noticed that when I did, because I did try that. Um, but I, you know, all the suggestions that the cleanup, um, are, are good suggestions and are easy to do. Yeah, and especially the little corner of the chair would would add some some length to the the edge of his shirt, which I think would would help the form. I think it would actually help the movement of his um, pose. Yeah, I love the the pose is fantastic. His energy is is amazing through it. You can feel it right through. So for me, that is one that trumps everything else when it comes to portraiture. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's good that you noticed and explored the idea of straightening the lines and that you know the rules well enough to know when they don't work and when what it's yeah. what it's taking away is less than what it's adding um, yep. because I don't think that it would benefit it to do that. So um, I'm going to give this one a three in spite of the, the few things that we pulled out because I think that his expression and the energy you get from the photograph totally trumps any technicalities that we might have missed on it. This is what you look for when you look for a portrait, you know. Well, it was a kind of an extraordinary day. Um, going into Pixar, we actually saw Steven Spielberg. Nice. <laughs> walking in, it's, you know, he's, he's actually a very short man. And then they they fed us lunch like we were like privileged characters. It was really amazing to, to sort of have the opportunity to you know, work in a in a, a context where these people are just like really, yeah. really high high functioning, high class sort of deal. So yeah, I was thrilled. Yeah, it's awesome. This is one of my favorites that I've seen from you. Okay, tell me about this one. Um, so these are uh, two sisters, Perry and Callan, and um, I had decided a, a rent a. 70 to 200 Canon 2.8. I used the F4, but I thought I'd play with the 2.8. Okay. Um, and so I got these, um, got their mom to um, agree to, you know, let me use their kids as subjects. Um, and, you know, I got them with the dog and I got them holding different color umbrellas and I got them doing stuff. But uh, these two girls are 
sisters, uh, Cal is six and Perry is eight. And they're constantly in a state of either fighting or um, being sisters. So I, yeah. I, just, I just saw this little moment of um, um, Cal sneaking up behind Perry and Though she wanted to bug her and annoy her, she did it. In, she did it in a very loving way, and I just thought, okay, there's my shot. This is a really cute concept, and it's very unique. I've never seen anything um, like it. I'm not. I'm not entirely sold on the crop, um, just because I think that there's so little information. Um, that it takes a second to figure out whose limbs belong to, like you have to look at it for a minute to yeah. figure out what's going it's on. Um, but I don't think that that's a bad thing because if people have to sit and look at it, that means they're sitting and looking at it. Yeah, um, so I like to does, I'm curious, does it make you want to see a face? Yeah, for uh -huh. me it does. Like yeah. my first thought was, this is such <laughs> a unique concept for a sibling photo um, most parents want pictures of their children's faces if they're buying them. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I totally think that this would work as a side portrait where you would be able to see both their faces at the same time, even though they're back and forth. And I'm guessing that they would be great expressions at this age, whether they're annoyed or they're giggling and loving yeah. each other. Um, as it is, it might be stronger to actually kind of crop it a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm and take out more of the negative space because I don't mm -hmm. think that this is doing anything for you. So I would be inclined to like cut it like right about here across mm -hmm. yeah, almost I, I at the shoulders. That. And I also tried to go vertical yeah. and get the get an expression, but they, they were too quick. And I you know it yeah. just happened and it was gone. Um, yeah. Um, moment kind of thing. Um, interesting her mom loved this. That was her favorite. Yeah. But her mom's an art That's, teacher, so <laughs> that explains it. No, I do. I do like it. Like it makes me want to see the faces, but yeah. that's good because that would be the one that would make me want to open the album and look at the rest of them. I do think that it would probably be stronger if it was cropped. Yeah, in a I agree. Bit I'm looking tighter. at it right now with a little bit tighter crop in it. In it, and um, gosh, you know, it's interesting. So you know, people get all like, "Oh yeah, I want to get that 2.8 for the bouquet," you know, <laughs> but. Well, actually, it's selective focus. It always has been and always will be, as far as I'm concerned. But you're right. The, um, the, the, the immediacy, when I get rid of that bokeh <laughs> background that everybody's so crazy about on the internet um, and bring that in tight, it, it actually, to me, makes the puzzle even more interesting. You're going, well, who's got what arms? And wait a minute, where are the hands? And um, I think it's stronger. Yeah. Um, if you were going to keep it in this dimension, I'd also be inclined to just um, clone out the hair here, this little yeah. bit, um, just because you have this sort of asymmetrical symmetry going on, but it's yeah. close enough with the line down the center and the repeating pattern of the pockets and the hand placement that it's, it's almost perfectly asymmetrical on more yeah. of like a down angle. Um, I totally agree with that, and that was in one of my comments when I when I posted this, um, because um, I asked people what they thought about the hair, but I didn't get much response. Yeah, um, so I'm going to give it to two. Right. I like it. I definitely, one of my favorite things about you is that you're not afraid to see things differently and experiment and showcase with what other people would leave behind is not necessarily a good composition. Like most people would have snapped that shot and it would have just been at the older sister and you wouldn't have her face. Like if it was a moment and you couldn't get around to the side, like that would have been it. Not many people would think to look at it like this. Um, so your vision is definitely one of my favorite things. Thank you. All right. Tell me about this one. This, this was fun. Um, one of my good friends is a woman named Nancy, and um, she's a graphic designer and a children's science fiction writer. Um, and she's married to this guy at the time was a philosophy professor. But philosophy professors at Stanford do more than just talk about philosophy. They do serious math. Mm -hmm. And um, this was a group, um, Center for... Um, language and CSLI, 
linguistics and something. Yeah. Anyway, so the guy in the middle in the back with the dark hair is John. And this is his group of um, um, professors and, and grad students. And they wanted to have a group photo. They were done with their program and or their project or whatever it was. And they wanted to have a picture of a group shot of them at the beach. The only time they could do it was like 11 o'clock, right? When we know the sun is really good on the beach. Right. Um, so um, we just, you know, trundled out to the beach and I found a, a rock that would kind of fit them all and sort of, you know, get them assembled in a group. And the other thing is they brought these props that they wanted. And um, let's see, I don't know why I didn't shoot color. Um, so I think the props were colored um, and it was a long time ago. So I don't, I can't, I, I've lost those brain cells. <laughs> um, so, you know, I shot three rolls with the Hossie and used a, a Norman 200B battery, you know, flash to do some damage control to the shadows. But, um, you know, in, 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 you know, all but, two or three cases it worked well, but you know, there's, there's a couple of guys here that, you know, the shadows are not, are not helping and I couldn't, you know, I, again, I haven't gone back to that shoot and looked at all 36 pictures to see all the shadows and all the faces. Um, yeah. But this is one that, that made it into my book because I've got good expressions and good body language. And I thought it would be fun to, 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 to shapes and just, um, you know, tone them like we used to do with the martial oils on, on black and white prints. Interesting. Uh, and meanwhile, everybody from the now generation is uh, turning their nose up at spot coloring and they don't realize what a labor yeah. intensive thing it was to be able to add it. Um, I love the I love the expressions. You have such good energy from everybody involved. The lighting's a little harsh, specifically on where you're getting like harsh shapes of light like you know yeah, the guy in the black shirt took it you know took it the worst um and the guy under the polyhedron has his eyes closed yeah and this was in the day of film you know actually now that i think about it and you've had to bring up all those um wags on the internet <laughs> i could i could get out this film and find all the best perfect expressions scan them all do head swaps and make it you know you know what though, but at the same time, like it's one of those things where I think um, we're inclined now because we have the capability to yeah. think about that. But this was the actual moment, and this was them actually being there. And when they look back at that, yep, and twenty, fifty years from now, like they don't want a moment that you created for them. They want to go right back to what it was. So I'm always a big believer that like I'll swap heads and. You know, when I was doing weddings, I would like swap heads in the bridal party and stuff. But, you know, I would never do it in post or change yeah. things around that are supposed to be in the moment. And this totally is. Um, well, I have another aside on this in that same vein in that this is the a copy photograph of a print. And the print was made on Agva Pro Trigger Rapid, which my first lot or smart no, I'm, I'm sort of a slut when it comes to photo materials but <laughs> it was it was one of my favorite love affairs in black and white photography was this agfa brown tone paper and i miss it like i like bad. it too just yeah. miss it and i i i spend all this time in lightroom and um hue and saturation you know trying to dial in what's the what's the agfa what's the agfa formula <laughs> um so i just i just had to say that because i love that paper and i miss it viscerally <laughs> i can see why there's something very charming and vintagey about it and it's interesting because you even in the day of modern photography and photoshop and all the things we can do it's interesting that in doing them um that when we're impersonating these kind of filters and effects and vintage kind of looks that we never really accomplish them like yeah. you can tell that these weren't it wasn't a color photograph that we took in spot yeah. color and made black and white you can tell that the color was added not that it was taken mm -hmm. away from everywhere else which i 
think is really interesting from a visual perspective. I mean, you know, this isn't this isn't even placing in competition when we're talking about photography from the sake of view of other photographers, but it is winning absolutely because I could totally see this sitting as a framed print on the wall of everyone that's in this picture. And for me, yeah. that's what I'm looking for when we go to, um, you know, when it comes down to it, like all the accolades and the applause of, of the people um, that are your peers means nothing comparative to the people that are actually in the shot. Um, and the expressions are killer. Like it just makes yeah. you want to smile really when you're happy, looking yeah. at these people like having a good time. So, I mean, we can critique on it, but there, there isn't anything I'm saying that you're not catching and that isn't obvious, like, you know, the shapes of the light and the fact that we have some closed eyes and yeah. um, stuff like that. But overall, it's still a great moment and they all look like they're having a great time. And again, well, they're, you have they're all, all that. boys. So I was telling them dirty jokes. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> totally getting away with it. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a two. You know, it's not an exceptional photograph from you know the photographic standpoint with technicality, but it is exceptional in the sense that you have that energy and that you feel it. So when the person looking at it can look at a photo full of people that they've never seen or met and and want to laugh or smile or feel that energy too, then you succeeded. Oh, thank you. So. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm taking notes because uh, it's important. Uh, notes are good. All right, so you have passed your level four critique. Yay. Congratulations. Oh. Um, so you gave, me, you gave me a little bit of a hard time at the beginning. I had to work to get you in here, which I like. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I just, you know, I don't know why. I think the, your exact Google... words were... It could be amusing to have a young whippersnapper like oh. you. Oh, I, oh I, I see back in the, in, the, in the beginning. I'm sorry about that. And I'm also sorry, <laughs> I'm also sorry about the naked woman. I'm, I'm really regret doing that. <laughs> so no, no, it's good. That was totally, um, totally weird. No, it's good. You and I are going to get along fine. We're very similar in personalities and humor, so I think it's cute. And I, I like. Think, I also think in the writing context, the the affection doesn't translate. Yeah. You know, it's always just kind of like. Um, but I, I have great respect and admiration for what you've done at your age. <laughs> um, so you're here. And you're yep. in the Arcanum, and you obviously have years and years of experience and, and some good success because you're photographing some pretty prominent people. So why the Arcanum? What are you here for? Oh, you know, um, I think I applied like, I don't know, nine or 12 months ago, and I just, I just kept reapplying because it looks like an interesting learning paradigm. And one of the things I do that I'm passionate about is, is teaching people how to use their DSLR cameras. And I know the internet is exploding with various and sundry ways to share and bring this knowledge to people. And it's like, you know, it, it, it's a mass communication medium. So I'm interested in what people are doing. We all see the, the talking heads on YouTube, you know, the, the Scott Kelby with the, with the t-shirt thing and, you know, um, I teach people in small groups of six. Okay. And I don't know if I'm going to make any money at it because, um, you know, I don't, I don't have the volume thing going for me, but I enjoy seeing the look in their face when I explain to them or try to explain to them about aperture and shutter and that sort of thing. And they have their cameras, they've bought their cameras and they're really excited. Um, and they've also taken the step to invest in a class. Um, I know I could do better things after the class to give them support, like maybe have a little like review video or other links to other videos of people. I think some of the, um, the videos on lynda.com are very high quality, um, which she sold to LinkedIn for $1.2 billion. Wow. Yeah. I didn't Sounds know Sounds good. Yeah. I didn't need it. Um, just an art center dropout. Um, crazy. And, um, I've also been thinking of doing other things like, like creating like a little podcast. It's like half meditation and half guide to your camera. So you could listen to this thing while you're walking around 
and you've got your camera in your hand and, and I'm trying to explain in very generic terms how the ergonomics of your, your metering works and that even though it's a tool, you want to be your, your meter's spirit guide. You want to be the brains behind the gun kind of thing. And okay. so I'm, I'm looking at all different experimental ways of, um, you know, bringing information and sharing information. The, the, the Arcanum idea sounded really interesting, um, even though there's, there's certain resistance, but, you know, I've learned to just ignore resistance <laughs> for the most part. Um, and, um, you know, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I, I spend a lot of time, like a lot of artists and writers, in solitude. You know, it's it's me in my rubber room without a net for the most part, <laughs> and like like when I'm at home dealing with my kids, or but that's not an issue anymore. Or I'm, you know, I'm going out to clients. That's really kind of, the, or I'm working with assistant. Those that's my social network. Otherwise, I'm I'm working all the time, and I'm at a computer all the time. So I like the idea of what the potential, the internet and the video technology, and we're just at the beginning of this. We are literally looking at the, the tip of the iceberg. So I'm really interested in, in all of this technology. And what's really fun is I'm, I'm getting a sense that I'm, I'm with like-minded people. You know, mm. like I, I want to go have a beer with the pits, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. You know, and, and, and I want to meet, um, Who's the Australian fashion guy, um, Dean? You know, I've had some communication with him. Love his work, and uh, you know, uh, Donna Marie, her work and your critique with her was really, really interesting. And you know, I know I could probably talk to that woman for hours just about. Photography. I think everybody feels that way you about know? Donna. <laughs> um, so it, it's a very interesting experience, and it's very unusual. It's very new, so. Um, it's a little, um, it's a little slow the first couple of levels while everybody's getting their feet under them. But I can tell you that this is kind of an arcanum wide phenomenon. I've been at it for about a year now. So when you hit level ten and you graduate the foundation spheres, usually by level ten you'll have a pretty good handle on all of G plus and and the communities and hangouts and chats and how everything works. And so it'll it'll start to take on a second nature like Facebook. Um, in terms of ease of use. Um, when you hit level 10, they put you in what's called the artist atrium. And that's every single apprentice in the Arcanum from every house and every master that has reached level 10. Um, and it's just a community. So you'll mm -hmm. get to connect yeah. with people all over the place that are like-minded like that. But like, it really, it really is a little bit of a tribe yeah, like, I like we that. really have like kind of found our people, and everybody's like minded. And the people that aren't usually lose interest in it very, very quickly because it won't yeah. suit them. Um, so you know, it's I can usually pick them out pretty quick when I'm inviting them to begin with based on their, um, mm -hmm. you know, their profiles in the antechamber. But I mean, whatever, whatever margin of error there was you pretty much sealed that you were like the right kind of people with the email exchange that we had for the few days before before you sent just in personality so when i did i did spend a lot of time checking you out i have to admit because I, I if i'm going to commit to something i don't want to do it half-assed and yeah. i was kind of wondering well is you know is anybody gonna you know what's this arcanum thing because i was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and had no idea how that was working but um you know, ultimately, I am a people person. I'm also in a, in a profound <laughs> um, precipice of change in my life. So I'm I'm really exploring all sorts of ideas and new things, and redoing both of my websites, and sort of really focusing on on things that I do well and that I like to do. You know, I know my strengths in in teaching photography have a lot to do with allaying people's fears about the tool, which is a camera which is a highly evolved result of art and science. It's one of the most amazingly complicated devices, yet people will use their iPhone like a vacuum cleaner, and I want to teach people how to use their DSLR like a musical instrument. And at the same time, I'm fascinated by people, so I want to keep a, a portrait career going, but you know that's, that's really hard these days because most people either have to do something like weddings, boudoir, family, uh, and and infants, you know, and that's that's where 
all the trade magazines are targeting their ads because that's where the revenue is. Um, but I'm still sort of stuck in this sort of studs turkle working kind of. I like to photograph people in their environment at work and doing stuff, or you know, in in a context of you know, doing something or whatever. I don't know. So I'm sorry, I'm yammering. No, no, it's good. Going um, on and this on. Is this is what we do. This is exactly what I do in level four. Like we go through the images, but the second half of critique is just essentially getting to kind of know what you're about and who you are and, you know, really where, where you are and where you want to go, you know, because if you're going to yeah. invest the time and money to keep learning, then that should be towards the path that you want to do. So, I mean, you've been working in photography for a long time. So, are you looking to keep working in photography? Or are yeah. you trying to transition over? I'm going out with my boots on. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm never going to stop. You know, there's there's lots of interest for me, um, and you'll see when when I've got my my new photo trainer site up. Um, it's also going to be where my blog is, and my blog will show lots of interesting, diverse things from pinhole photography to, you know, uh, doing a series on cars, which is really interesting. Um, and yet, I'm going to keep my portraiture website clean, direct about photographing people um, okay. so that, you know, that, that message isn't mixed. Um, I'm using a product called A Photo Folio. I don't know if you've heard of them. Mm -mm. They're sort of a spinoff of live books. Okay. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm, my problem is I deal with a lot of procrastination and a lot of, you know, like, okay, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it tomorrow. Because I think part of the creative mindset is you have all these things and then you just kind of get deer in the headlights. <laughs> Stuck. Well, I'm going to give you some very sage, masterly advice for the end of our critique. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Write this down. This is really important. Okay. And I want you to put it somewhere you can read it every day. Procrastination is like masturbation. It feels good at first, and then you realize you're just effing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad used to say that to me all the time. And really? I hear it in his head every time I go, I'll put that off till tomorrow. <laughs> no, I never talk to my kids about sex. They would just go, <laughs> Dad, I don't need to hear this. No. Well, he didn't start saying it until after I was out of high school, but... Um, and here my doctor thought time, it was prostatic therapy. I don't know. Yeah, the first time he said it to me, I was like, oh, it made like it was shock value, but it made an impact. So it's become so, okay. So what's the second part of that procrastination? It's like masturbation. What's the second part? Feels good at first, and then you realize you're just effing yourself. Okay. Sounds like good Judeo Christian advice. Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> we just dropped a couple of viewers too. And they're like, that's it. We're out. We can't take it. Um, no, but it, you know, there's a lot of truth in a more poetic fashion. Um, I did, I don't know. Did you see my, uh, photo ignite presentation, the five minute, um, five minute presentation on time as a currency? Yeah, I think we were standing up by a podium or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I watched yeah. that so twice. This actually. is, this is a really yeah personal mantra of mine um, because there's a lot of people that are getting close enough and then saying, ah, oh, it's close enough, you know? And so they're shooting things that they don't love and they're doing things that they don't love doing. And they do it with this intention that they can buy their freedom later when they retire to do what <laughs> yeah, they want, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, which is like famous last words. Yeah. Um, and I also think I remember you um, talking to the, you know, Brian and Susan about this. Yeah, it's it's really, really it's really essential. Stuff. Yeah, you know, like you can make more money. You can make money at a million different things. If money is the focus, photography is probably not the career. I can think of ten careers that I can make a lot more money than I make at photography, and I make good money at photography. Um, you know, it's a labor of love. So for people yeah. to go towards something they're passionate about. And then start to make a little bit of money and go, well, this is probably all I can do. Like you're saying, you know, the children and the families and weddings, especially when in terms of portraiture, mm -hmm. these are the ways that we can make money. And I have so many people that are like, well, I shoot weddings because, you know, it's a thousand or two thousand or four thousand dollars for essentially a day or two's worth of work. But I hate it. And you can just feel it like yeah. depreciate in them. And well, you're funny, you know, I, your I time. actually do weddings, but I, I have my criteria. I'll do weddings when I'm asked. 
because I, I treat it like a role of the shaman in the tribe being asked to do a healing. Mm -hmm. And then when I do a wedding, I'm all in and yeah. it is a blast. I make yeah. sure I make sure that they're treated like, you know, the first couple that ever fell in love. <laughs> and I do it photojournalistic style and I might do, you know, one, you know, every couple of years, but part of that criteria of having it be people I know are part of the family helps me totally engage. And I know the drill. I know that, you know, I know the structure of, of you know, what you need to shoot for a wedding. And um, if you need, maybe you need a second shooter and, you know, pr you know, all that stuff. Um, and then I set up speed lights and remote, you know, for the dancing later. And I encourage people to get drunk and <laughs> dance. And, um, we just, you know, just run around and have fun shooting. Um, they usually get mad because there's too many pictures to choose from. And then I get bogged down in the post because I don't do it a lot, but right. that's okay. So, um, so you're shooting and you love shooting and it seems like you're, you're getting more into teaching. Have you thought about teaching in an online environment? Like, have you thought about maybe becoming a master at the Arcanum um, or doing something? I thought it would be interesting, but when seeing how hard you work <laughs> and what you do, um, and how you, how well you do it, I'm thinking, well, I personally don't have the time for that right now because I teach, I've been doing photo trainer for, I've got, eight years of Yelp stickers. I've had five stars on Yelp for eight years running. Wow. Um, and it's personal. And I do the DSLR classes. And then I really hound people to come and do field trips. And we go and do tide pools. Um, I do birds at the Baylands. Um, I do a, a natural light and speed light portraiture workshop at a really fabulous location where I hire models. Um, and then I do macro flowers. And... Um, those keep me busy on the weekends. In fact, I'm going to miss Trey's visit to San Francisco. Oh, which is a shame because I'm coming yeah. out. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm taking my son to college. Stupid kids. <laughs> um, yeah, and his moving day is the 19th. You're coming out, huh? Yeah, I'll be out yeah. probably short, probably from like late on this. I get in late on the 17th, early on the 18th. Like I'm taking a late flight because the 17th is my daughter's 10th birthday and double digits is important. Yeah, um, I know. And so you get in off, you get in it early in the morning on the 17th or late at night? Yeah, it's like, it's like late o'clock on the 17th or very early on the 18th. And then I'll be there the 18th and 19th and probably the 20th. Don't worry, we'll do it again. I'm on the West Coast at least a couple of times. I was just out there for the Dalai Lama thing a couple of months ago. Oh, really? Yeah, we cut it early because uh, my father-in-law was really sick, so I ended up um, having a couple of days early. Yeah, the, uh, the fellow that was the translator for the Dalai Lama for 30 years, mm -hmm. the fellow named Thupin Jinpa, I call him Jinpa, I'm reading his book, and he's one of the creators of the uh, Compassion Care class at Stanford is now offering um, because of neuro neurosurgeon put him together with Kelly McGonigal and created this course at Stanford on, on compassion. Wow. And it's really interesting stuff. That's awesome. And um, um, yeah, so this guy, he was like traveled with the Dalai Lama for 30 years. Yeah, it's yeah. I can't even imagine. It's incredible. Um, he was, it was very humbling yeah. to just be in the presence for a while, but, um, so are you a meditator? Yes. That's good. I teach my kids too. I'll have to send oh, you the video. That's so cute. Yeah. There's a video of my kids sitting and like when she was first, that's um, a tall order. I don't know. Katie, Katie's pretty good at it, but like the first video we did, I think Katie was like six or seven. So my son was only four and they're sitting on the floor and Katie's like, you know, they, they pick up like the little mannerisms and like yeah. preconceived notions. So she was just sitting there in the kitchen oh going, my God. Um, That's so great. Um, and I came downstairs. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, I'm like, what are you doing? And my son, I have him on video and my son's sitting there. So my daughter's like very serious. Like, um, and my son's going, um, 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 um. Like he's doing yeah, some kind of meditation. Drum, so meditation. Yeah. yeah, it was really cute. Um, but it's good. You know, I think, um, I think people have a lot of preconceived notions about what meditation is or isn't. 
Um, and so they have that kind of mindset, but I definitely believe in a lot of the benefits of it. There's a lot of my people in spirit too, that are doing a lot with meditation right now. And like, where um, creativity meets consciousness and, and how that filters into the rest of the world. So I think as we move you up that you'll, if we get you into sphere two, um, once you get a little more comfortable, maybe I'll bring you in for a week or two because you're very in line with their personalities. I think um, I think it would be really beneficial. Um, I want you to keep an open mind about the Arcanum because you definitely have like a teacher and master mentality. And if you're doing this much stuff, um, yeah. to begin with outside. I teach a lot here. I've been at it for a year. I have the sphere one. I have the sphere two. I have the foundation levels. I had three houses in and I run the path of the protege because I love it. I just love everything mm -hmm. about the arcanum and the energy. Um, but you can talk to the people like uh, John Kaminsky and uh, John Nicole and Monica are all active masters now. They graduated from House Lark and they have one cohort with 10 to 15 people in it and they're all in the convergence group like you can just plus them and and uh start a conversation but i mean so it's john, really, nicole and monica yeah john nicole and monica um all came through the first 20 levels with me john's actually in my sphere too as well he's doing both right now um but they're running cohorts you know with between like seven and and 15 people um which is a much smaller sure smaller orders so you can really kind of cater it to suit um you know your own lifestyle and what you are and it's just about really setting expectations like a lot of the masters they travel and they work a lot so their apprentices know that they only check in twice a week into the community yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. um so i'm just hands-on because all of my people in my group are really awesome and i love knowing what you guys are up to so i'm i'm much more um, involved and up to my elbows than most of the other people are. I get yelled at about it all the time. <laughs> and so, okay, so, um, so how can I help? What are you looking to learn? Where do you want to go in the next 15 levels? Um, well, I just, I, I need, you know, my, my big problem has been marketing. Okay. And I just, I just have to, you know, and I'm actually doing a big push on that now uh, that the, um, you know, the depression medications are kicking in. Um, I'm getting a lot done. <laughs> um, so I'm just working hard. I've got a really good um, person designing my website. Um, you can go take a peek at dev.phototrainer.com. You can see the, the beta version if you're curious. Um, there's still more work. I'm trying to you know, find an e-commerce solution. I'm thinking of this outfit called Mind Body. Um, it, it's a system they use for booking yoga you know, and classes and stuff. Um, I've been using PayPal and OS Commerce, and that's not working. And my web person for that current site's in Belgium, so there's always been a hard time coordinating Belgium time. And uh, and the website's just you know. So I'm redoing that, and I'm redoing my portraiture site. In terms of portraiture, I'm about to photograph my attorney and do a video portrait of him for some projects that he's working on. So I'm looking forward to that. And I want to you know I want to continue to do more work both self-motivated or self-initiated and then and then use that work get it out there to you know encourage other people to hire me for their projects i actually think there's a, a interesting potential business opportunity in doing um, little short video portraits for people and their small business mm -hmm. um, with the advent of youtube we're, we're getting to a point now where people are looking for more sophisticated quality um video with good sound and good lighting um, and I see a window of opportunity in that. I've been working as a volunteer at the local, um, um, what do they call it, um, cable um, access station. Palo Alto has a very good, um, used to be the cable co-op. They've, they've got a full HD production studio. They run classes all the time. So I'm, I'm involved in, with that. So I'm volunteering and know how to use a TV camera in a studio, which is really fun. And working with those people, so that's another place where I'm, you know, getting to engage some community, and I'm learning what makes a good TV director, um, you know, who the good graphics people, who who's good at working the TriCaster, which is that switch that pulls in all the different monitors, and and um, um, and then you know what take kind of people 
are the kind of people to produce a show that pull together the talent and create content and do like an interview or do a musical performance or something like that. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, and you know, I'm still, you know, I still have a shoddy video from my 5D or 5D Mark III. I've got all the gear sitting here, you know, and I've got the big fancy microphone. You know, I could be Trey Rack with a big microphone, and like, but um, uh, I'm just, I'm just too ADD and too busy. So marketing is important because I've got to, I've got to generate funds, and I've got to um, just really work on that part. Um, and it's a little different. It goes in waves, you know. Some some months I'm really busy, and some months I'm going. You know, is there anybody out there? Yeah. Kind of is there um, is photography all that you do? That's your full time yep. career. Okay. Um, in terms of marketing, who are your potential clients? Because you you have a pretty wide array of work yeah. in your portfolio. So. Yeah, I mean. Um, Um, I could shoot pictures for anybody that's looking for, you know, a, a better quality image than, you know, what they have or, um, but I don't, you know, I'm, I'm also have, it has to be at a price range that works, you know, from what do you know, you hundred dollars really, up. What do you really love to shoot? Oh, I really like photographing people. Okay. So if and, you could build uh, a completely successful funded business just around portraiture, would you be happy with that? Um, I'd probably be happy until I got bored and then I'd probably try to look for other fun things to do. I mean, I do love teaching. Um, you know, my dream is to, to get another studio happening where I can do both. I can be doing studio portraiture, teaching, and have a good mix of those two. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, the, the teaching um, leads to other interesting gigs. Like I've done group workshops at Google and at Facebook um, and eBay. Um, now, I haven't pursued those, which, which makes me feel like, gosh, you know, it's low hanging fruit. I could, I could find out the people and the companies that, that do those sort of things because those are, those are lucrative because um, they don't, they're not shy about spending money when it comes to entertaining the troops. Right. You know, um, yeah, I mean, Facebook, I did a, a gig for Facebook. It was like $6,500. Nice. And it was fun. And they were all engaged and they were smart. You know, it's kind of like, I can't believe they're paying me to do this. Um, <laughs> another one of the, another one of the um, things is I do private training and I don't promote that. Um, although I'm, I'm actually, been working on this marketing plan this week of actually putting dates on the calendar and what kind of promotions to send when. Um, I'm starting with this little company uh, that I have found that's going to help me um, build Facebook clicks. I don't want fans and I don't want likes. I want clicks on my website. And this company, it's this, you know, they're, they're looking, I mean, it's an experiment. And I've I've been burned a couple of times, so I, I kind of go into this with, you know, heavy did heart. You, um, did you happen to watch the roundtable that a couple of the masters and I just did on social media and no. the market? Um, drop, me, drop me a line in the community and remind me to share the link. We just did it like a day ago. It's probably very recent in the library. Um, Ron Clifford hosted it. So if you're not following him on G plus, if you go add him to your circles, it'll be on his page. Okay. Um, but it was a one hour round table on how to market on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Oh, cool. And, um, you know, all the social medias right now. Here's, um, here's my, my last piece of advice. Um, as far as Facebook goes, do not pay to have somebody market you for clicks for likes for anything it is a losing game and the problem is is that um anytime you pay for any kind of advertising on facebook the way the facebook algorithms work is they put it out to say five percent of your audience so if you have a hundred people that are following you on facebook five people get to see your post of those five people depending on how many likes, comments, reshares you get the interactions, then Facebook goes, oh, people are interested in this. Three out of five liked it and reshared it. So we're gonna put it out to 
five more people in their following or that they have mutual connections. And so it spiders out. That's how the viral thing works. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is, is that if you're paying somebody to essentially fill you up, one, they have other companies that get paid third party things to just sit and click it that have no interest, but you'll get that click mark that you're paying for, you know, and that's literally all they do is sit there and. Well, okay. So I'm a little confused because what I, and it's an experiment and they told me I can, you know, I can do it for a month and I can, I can bail if I want is I'm actually paying people to do Facebook advertising for me with, with photos. And I don't know if that's different than what you're talking about or it's the same thing. Well, no, because here's the, here's the problem is that, so you're going to pay them and the way that these companies now work is that you pay them for advertising. There's other companies that the people get paid to go and click and like these things. So they put them out on these sites and they go, oh, well, we're going to pay for advertising. You're going to pay us. We're going to take part of that budget and we're going to advertise elsewhere on Facebook. And then there's third party companies that get paid to go and find those things and click and like them and they get a kickback for every click. So if they're getting paid 30 cents per click, they'll throw five or 10 cents back at the other people. It's like having those people that do the paid surveys. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're not interested in what you're doing because they're like, they'll go through and pick 25 different companies that they want to review or they want to go click on their stuff that day. Um, but the, if you go and look at them, like if you do it with likes, you can tell are the five people, the five other pages they're following, are they also photography pages or do they like you and plastic and this kitty cat and you know coca-cola and toilet bowl cleaner like then they're just paper clips where they make their money off of going and clicking for these things all right so i'm confused so, i'm slow on the take up so um you're saying there's third-party companies they get paid to click on stuff mm -hmm. look and, just uh go and google uh click banks and click okay. You know, because that's all it is. They get paid per click, you know. So there's other people that get paid to go click. Um, the bigger problem, though, is that even if they are, if these random people go through, because most people see an ad and go, oh, great, this guy does photography, and they click like, but they have no interest, and they add you to the list of a 1,000 other pages that they liked as well, and it's a mindless like thing. Whereas if I come across your work organically because I met so-and-so who told me about your work and I go, oh my gosh, I heard about this guy. He took that incredible portrait of the Pixar guy, right? And I go and I click and I like it, then I'm genuinely interested in what you have to offer. So it really is about quality, not quantity. Mm -hmm. Because if you have 500 people in front of the 10 people that really want to buy what you're doing, they're all the way at the back of the line right now. Chances are that they're going to get bored and go over there to see what that guy's offering before they get a chance to muscle through the crowd to get to you. So the problem is, is that the more popular that your Facebook page gets, if they're not people that are genuinely interested in you, the chances of your stuff going out to the people that'll actually click, interact, share, like is minuscule and it continues wow. to diminish. So it's better to have a hundred people on your page that really love your art and what you're doing and are genuine interested potential customers than to have 10,000 people on this mindset that those 10,000 people, if they share it, that they'll put it out to their people and you get more of a widespread base. It's the general practitioner thing. Like, Oh, I shoot everything because if I shoot everything, then I can have clients that want me for portraits and clients that want me for weddings and clients that want to hang landscape work on their walls. And so I have a wider ability to make income, but it's like being a general practitioner as opposed to being a heart surgeon. So you would trust your heart surgeon to tell you you have a cold and prescribe you some kind of uh, flu medicine. Yeah. You would not trust your family doctor to perform open heart surgery on you. Sure. Unless it was a last result. Who makes more money? The heart surgeon. It's yeah, the same thing. Part, I'm just still confused how the how paying for you know, I'm sort of concerned now because I'm gonna give these guys some money. Um, paying for ads on Facebook is um, a fool's errand. I will um, remind me, just tag me in plus one right. me in the group and say just share the Facebook thing because there's a really good YouTube tutorial info 
commercial that breaks down exactly how the algorithms work mm -hmm. and why it's a bad idea to pay for likes or views or, or content. But the general theory is, is that Facebook's only putting it out to 5% of your people. So when you're paying somebody else to push it out to any number of other people, they can very easily create a list, like the same way that you can hire people to, um, you know, to transcribe letters, you know, and you like, have so what, some... what I'm doing is I'm paying these guys to actually put ads on Facebook. Uh-huh, so on the ads, little sidebars. Yeah, so these ads will appear to people who profess to like photography or travel or have it, you know, a DSLR or something. And, and I do this with some trepidation because I don't want it to be one of these kinds of things where these, these ads follow you, you know, follow you around and, and you know, it's like, you know, I went and, and looked at something on Amazon and, you know, for the next four days, this little ad follows me around because I expressed an interest on a camera in Amazon for a client. And it, you know the internet thinks I want to buy this camera, and if it keeps reminding me, I'll I'll, I'll relent. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that's going to happen. But these, you know, I've sat down with these people. They're young. It's a new company. They seem to be on you know have my interests in mind. And believe me, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm a skeptic from way back. So I'm going to put them through their paces. Um, but well, I, the thing is, is that they're doing something that you can do for yourself. So you're going to pay. Yeah, I could do it for myself if I had the time and the inclination. But actually, I have other fish that them. I would rather fry. I, okay. I need to write a newsletter. I need to send out flyers. Um, I also have a constant contact list. So I'm, I'm looking at this Facebook thing as a potential experiment to see if it will do something that it's been, in, it's been on my list, but I just haven't gotten around to doing. And okay. um, they seem to be real customer-oriented, so... They we'll probably are. The problem, the problem isn't with them. The problem is with the Facebook algorithms. Yeah. So the issue comes in in that Facebook is putting it out to thousands or millions of people, and the more people that it gets put out to, the more people that are in between you and your genuine. So you have like your evangelists that are like, I love everything this person does. I mm -hmm. want to see every image. Yeah. I want to link everything. And then you have your people that are your fans that are like, oh yeah, that guy is great. I also follow so-and-so and so-and-so who do similar stuff. Right. And then you have the people that like you and then you have your mom and your sister and your kids yeah. you know, who like everything you do because they're supportive. And then you have a whole bunch of people that are mindless and just go, oh yeah, I'll click like on that because I like that image. And they never go to the page again. Right. It's like strong clicks or just you know just empty clicks yeah exactly and the problem is is that the more you advertise the more those empty clicks that pile up and so this balloons and the people in between your 100 people that are on your fan page now that are your genuine followers and your evangelists and the people uh, most unlikely okay. now they're in the middle of a thousand empty clicks and semi people and so what you do is it's like putting five drops of food coloring in a bowl and then filling that bowl with water Right. And then dumping that bowl of water into a swimming pool and wondering why it's not red anymore. You know, so the more you do it, the more you dilute it. And the problem is, is that if Facebook looks at it and goes, okay, well, we're going to send it to five of your 100 people. And now you have a thousand people. It's going to go, okay, well, we'll send it to 50. But if 800 of those people are empty likes, the chances that any of those 50 are going to be your genuine people that are going to hire you for this is slim to none. So you actually end yeah. up yeah, putting yourself in the way of your own marketing by doing that. Um, All right, that's but, good to know. I'll I'll keep that in mind, and I'll definitely check out this this um, YouTube thing. Yeah, I'll I'll go look and find the link that it explains and, uh, it a little more simply than me, I did. But it also gives me something to to run up the flagpole with this client. As yeah, we it's a good. This. Um, it's a good thing. I would put that in front and then just ask them because certain yeah. people are very good at what they do and they'll find their way around it. And I would be very interested to, um, see a post and a write up from you after you've been trying it out for a month or two and see if you're seeing a lot of hiring, if you're seeing a yeah. lot of clicks, if those clicks are actually purchasing, you know, well, these, these are basically targeted to photo trainer and getting okay. people with cameras to take the next step. Right. Yeah, so I, I would be I would be very interested to see what you find yeah. and how the results are and if you think it's worth um, the investment that you're making. You know, admittedly, the marketing for my, my portrait work is, is um, probably where I need the most work. 
<laughs> you know, portraiture, I, I got to tell you, I have not paid for advertising ever. I just, I just don't. Um, marketing has become um, a social connection. Mm -hmm. So you're more likely to book a client by sitting yeah. down and doing this for half an hour than you are with the most elaborate ad campaign that you can possibly no, I, I, I actually, you're right, because I actually had a discussion with a friend of mine who's in the restaurant business yesterday. And he's opening up another new restaurant. I just mentioned, hey, you know, let me know if you need something. And he goes, oh, you're right. Yeah, I'll definitely give you a call. And it's just like that interaction that really makes it work. So that might be an interesting thing for me to, to learn and explore. Yeah, and with social media, it's so easy now because we're the sharing generation. You know, everybody puts a photo up and they share it. That's how things go viral now. So for me, like marketing for me is just sharing my work. I put it on my Facebook mm -hmm. and then I tag whoever the client is and then yeah, all I, of I hear you. friends love it. And, and um, you know, it's very organic. Right, and, and the work's excellent. It, speaks volumes you know yeah so okay i have to go move my car or i'm gonna okay get you go do that <laughs> i have to go to another critique so um i will catch up with you i will drop those links just drop me yeah. a reminder in the group and i'll get them to you by monday i'm really sorry i'm gonna miss you this on the 19th I, but you know we'll schedule another one i'm gonna be out in california later this year i want to go photograph the butterfly migration so i'll oh, drop you a line next that would time be fun. um that's santa cruz that's my area all right is it Okay, good. Well, it's only an hour away. That counts. Well, states my area. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right I will thanks talk a to lot. You soon. Bye. Good champ. Bye bye.